watching over his father's sheep. And, and everybody knows about David and Goliath and, 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 and how that he slayed Goliath and really slayed. But uh, to defend his sheep, but 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 something God was teaching David right here on this the, these these plains of, of Rephraim was he was teaching him to play a harp as well, and he wouldn't just uh, slay a giant, uh, and he wouldn't learn how to use a sling because of protecting sheep, but he would learn how to play an instrument because he would bring peace to sheep, and he would bring peace to the sheep of Israel. Amazing. Wherever we are, understand that we may be learning on a small scale, but never underestimate the magnitude of what that scale is going to do on a greater spectrum. Amen. And so here it is that David, he was learning to play the harp out here in the fields taking care of the sheep. But he would later write songs that would be so amazing. We think about him uh, with one sling killing the giant. But think about how that he was with the strings. How that he wrote great things that are even magnificent to us today. Think about Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. It was a psalm. And think about uh, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Think of Psalms 150. Praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord in the sanctuary. One day he's in the field. But the next day, he is going to be in the place where, where he is sharing uh, the word of God uh, and the praises of God uh, on a greater level. And so he was on a mission of mercy. And he was on a mission of encouragement. And, and in the fields one day, but he was the anointed future king the next. And so uh, uh, here is David, this Jude uh, Judean, all his heart, he's praising uh, in the fields, but soon he'll be praising in the throne room where there's a king, King Saul. No one else could do what David could do. Think about that. No one could do, Sister Jan, what David could do. He brought peace to the king who was so discouraged and tormented. And I want to talk to you about something this morning. <laughs> David had a ministry of encouragement. David had a ministry of encouragement. You think about him being a shepherd. You think about him being a giant slayer. But I want to tell you what David's biggest ministry was. He had the ministry of encouragement. And so here he is. He's playing on his heart and he's encouraging others. Uh, I, do you ever think about someone who does something on a very large scale and they do it because it all started because they encouraged someone? I met a man several years ago through Brother Jim Hawk. And uh, Brother Brian, uh, uh, he, he is a minister at Y of the Well in Mechanicsburg. And his life is so amazing. He's a single man. He's in his 50s. He's never been married, never had children. But he has reached out to literally hundreds of young people, Brother Eli, because he was the youth pastor and, and in a church where there was many young people that was bound by drugs. But he would encourage them and help them. And he made a change, Sister Tina, in their life all because of the ministry of encouragement. I love Barnabas in the New Testament. He was an encourager. Think about it. Everybody else was afraid of Paul, uh, 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 who, who would later become known as Saul. Everybody was afraid of him and, and, and skeptical. But Barnabas was an encourager. And what a difference an encourager makes. I want to talk to us this morning about this. Do you realize that your life could make such a difference in others if you would learn to be an encourager? Think about someone in your life who encouraged you when everybody else was a discourager. Think about someone who encouraged you because they noticed the gift or they noticed the skill or they noticed the desire. And their words of encouragement did something great in your life. They may not make the newspaper and they may not be known for great things, but you know that in your life they were an encourager and they made a difference. David was an encourager. His life made a difference because he knew about encouragement. The first thing I want to talk to you about is there are discouraged people everywhere. 
There was a man by the name of James Tillis, and he was a boxer. And uh, he was a cowboy from Oklahoma, and he came to Chicago, and he, was, he, he, he came because he wanted to make a difference. He said he remembered getting off of, of the bus uh, that, that in, in the early 80s in that uh, twin city. And he said he had two cardboard suitcases. And he said he remembered getting off of the bus. And he put down his suitcases. And he looked at the Sears tire. And he said, I'm going to make a difference in Chicago. And he said he reached out to get his suitcases. And he said they were gone already. Someone stole them. There's a lot of discouraged people in the world. Think about wanting to do something and right away uh, how, uh, how quickly things can go from bad to worse. You know, the, the enemy of our soul, he wants to discourage us. He is a pro at discouraging. He is the master tormentor. He is the snare. He is the best at uh, giving the snares of offense and, and, and unforgiveness. Uh, I, I remember a story I heard many years ago, and it was about the devil when he was having a yard sale. And if you like going to yard sales, the devil was having a yard sale. And uh, in his yard sale, folks were looking around and they began to mingle because he had some things even in his garage that he was selling. So it was a mix between his yard and his garage. And he was selling all kinds of tools. And, he's, and one of the people that was at his yard sales, they, they, they came in and they looked at this tool in his, in his garage and they saw that it was very, very worn. And they said, what is that toy? Can I buy it? The devil said, oh, no, I would never sell that tool. He said, look around all these tools in my garage. I have a lot of tools. But when I can't get to people, this tool works when nothing else will. And I call it the tool of discouragement. If the enemy can do anything in our life, he will get us discouraged. He will lie to us. Discouragement is dissatisfaction with the past. It is distaste for the present. It is distrust for the future. Discouragement is, is ingratitude for the blessings of yesterday. It is indifference for the opportunities of today. It is insecurity for tomorrow. A discouragement is unawareness of the beauty of, 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 of God in our life. Uh, the, the unawareness of that. It is the unconcern of the needs of our fellow man. And it is unbelief for the promises for tomorrow. It is impatience with time. It is immaturity of thought. It's, it's impoliteness to God. Uh, this dissatisfaction. This you see that in the Word of God, you'll find that there were some folks who became discouraged. And you'll find that Saul was one of those people. And so when we look at this evil spirit coming up on Saul, it discouraged him. It, 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 it disgruntled him. And so the Word of God says that David would come with his harp. And he would begin to play. And he would begin to sing. And the spirit would go away. And King Saul would find that he was no longer discouraged the way that he once did was. You see, sometimes people wonder, well, what's the use? And why try anymore? I should just give up. People can fall into traps because they get discouraged. There is a story that's told about in the 19th century that there was a, a, a great artist. His name was Deontay Rossetti. Deontay Rossetti was approached by a man in his 40s who came and he said, Sir, could you tell me, could you tell me, what do you think of my drawings? And Rossetti looked at those drawings and as he looked at them, he, he, he began to notice there wasn't much talent there, Brother Lloyd. Uh, the, the, the pictures weren't so nice, Sister Susan. And Deontay looked at, uh, uh, Deontay Rossetti looked at the elderly man, uh, or the man in his 40s, and he said, I'm sorry, sir, but, but I don't see much talent here. I don't see much gift. It's not very nice. He said, well, then would you look at the pictures of my younger friend, the ones that he painted, and the one that he drew. And Deontay Rossetti began to look through the book of pictures, and he said, these are really good. Uh, uh, these are great. There is great potential here. You tell your friend he has great potential. 
And then there in his 40s, he looked back and he said, these are my pictures when I was in my 20s. And if I would have had someone like you give me some encouraging words, they would not be uh, uh, what my pictures are today in my 40s that don't look good. You see, encouragement will change the lives of people. And that's exactly what David did when he began to play that harp. He learned it out in the field when he was taking care of the sheep but he learned to master it and do it well and he didn't use it as a tool oh I had to take care of the sheep I was a forgotten son but he said no I take this opportunity that I'm gifted with and I'm going to use it to encourage others somewhere down the road because encouragement makes the difference encouragement makes the difference the Bible says that David loved Saul. He became his armor bearer. He picked up his harp and he drove away discouragement. Amen. You can find discouraged people anywhere. They're not a rare breed. They're everywhere. So look for folks and encourage them. This is our field right here. Where we're in the presence of God. Where we see God do great things in our lives. Yes, David conquered a giant, but he slayed a bear and he slayed a lion that came against the sheep. And more than the slingshot, Sister Susan, it was the harp that every day he played to the sheep. Sister Rachel, every day he sat it. So instead of worrying about conquering lions and bears and giants, why don't we focus our life upon playing the harp and learning to encourage other people because people need encouragement. Folks, I'm preaching the truth this morning. Amen. God is needing some Davids in our generation who will pick up the harp and learn to play it. And when opportunity arises, they will leave all other things and they will be an encourager. Amen. God needs men and women to be an encourager. Hundreds of years ago, there was a king of Scotland. His name was called Robert the Bruce. And Robert the Bruce had fought against England. And he fought six different times. And he failed miserably fighting for Scotland and their independence and wanting them to, to, to stand alone and, and wanting to take care of his people. And one day it began to rain, Sister Susan. And Robert the Bruce found himself in a cave. And as he was there in the cave and he was thinking, I might as well just give up. He said that there in the rain in the entrance of the cave he watched a spider and the spider began to throw her web and she threw her web one time out to the crevice and it fell and it looked like she wasn't going to build the web. She did it a second time and she did it a third time and she did it a fourth time and it fell and he's sitting there thinking why don't you just give up? You're not going to be able to build a web. She got to the sixth time and she failed. Robert the Bruce thought that's much like me. I'm just giving up. But on the seventh time, she threw her lap and it caught hold. And she began to weave her lap. It was in that moment, Sister Jan, that Robert the Bruce said, I'm going to try again. To make a very long story short, can I tell you that England, uh, Scotland is still independent and on its own because of one man, Robert the Wise, who watched a spider encourage him one day. Amen. All we need is a little bit of encouragement in our life, and it can change the course of history. All you need is to be an encourager to someone else and you can change the course of history. How many stop uh, before they hear someone else yell, go, 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 you can do it! But there's silence. And some fall short. It's interesting. When you read in Isaiah 41, verse number 17, the Word of God says, so the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. If you read the whole course of everything that's going on there, they're building a false idol. But in the middle of their building, there's a carpenter 
who is, uh, who is cutting the tree. He is carving it. And the goldsmith comes and intricately fashions that idol of wood uh, uh, with, with gold. And so that uh, and the, the, the contribution that the goldsmith gives, it can be completely done. And so the carpenter, he encouraged the goldsmith by saying, you can build the idol. I need to tell you something. We need men and women in the kingdom of God. We know the real God. Amen. We need men and women who will be encouragers of one another. Brothers who encourage brothers and sisters who encourage sisters. You can do it. You can complete. You can finish well. We often use this passage of Scripture for church attendance, but listen to the whole context of Hebrews 10. It says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. What is that? That is encouraging one another, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting or encouraging one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Paul said in First uh, Thessalonians 5, 11, encourage one another and build up. Amen. That's what church is. That's what the Christian life is. It is encouraging. Encouraging, and it is building up for the edification of God's kingdom and encouragement. God is looking for encouragers. God is looking for David's. God is looking for promises. Folks want all the self-help in the world. Folks want to read about what real leadership is about. The Word of God gives it to us. Real leaders will encourage. Amen. People who live with purpose will encourage one another. Maybe some of you have heard this song. You ever hear the, the, the song called uh, Hallelujah? The world sings it. And it. It says this. Now I've heard there's a secret chord. Just Bear with me for a moment, okay? Now, I heard that there's a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It sounds like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. Amen. There is a sweet chord that is very precious to the Lord. Do you know what the sweet chord is that David played? Encouragement. Encouragement. David knew how to play a harp. Not just to play a harp, but David knew how to encourage others. There was something about the way David played. There was something about being anointed. There was something about the words of the psalm. Amen. That broke through to King Saul. That lifted him from discouragement. That broke the enemy's discouragement upon him. Amen. Now we need folks in the church that know how to encourage other people. The enemy is out to discourage. If he can't get you with lies, and drinking and cheating and all those other bad things, he'll discourage you. And if he discourages you, discourages you, he knows he has you. But God is looking for instruments he can use that will be encouragers. We don't have to look far to find people that will discourage. David's heart, it encouraged. Did any of you ever hear of a woman named Helen Keller? <laughs> you know, all of her. Uh, physical uh, 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 lacks. But one lady named Ann Sullivan made a difference in Helen Keller's life. One day, world began to happen <coughs> and she began to understand that. Huh, death blind, but she began to understand once because there was a one woman, Ann Sullivan, who was an encourager. God help us to grab hold of the ministry of encouragement. You see, encouragers, they see a brighter future. They see possibilities. 
They know how to give words of support and encouragement and affirmation. God, help us to be committed to being an encouragement. Uh, God, uh, help us. I love what the Bible says in Proverbs. And I don't want you to do it for selfish motives, but listen to what Solomon said in all of his wisdom. In Proverbs 11.25, he said that he that watereth shall be watered. Do you know what that means? That means, Brother Craig, if I give you encouragement, it may be that Brother Josh gives me encouragement. And, and Brother Elam, you may encourage Sister Jan. And in return, Brother Wally may encourage you. He who waters shall be watered. Oh, you may say, no one ever encourages me. How about giving a little bit of encouragement? And you may find that the Word of God is true. He that watereth shall be watered. God wants to water your life. See, there will come days when all of us will be discouraged. And we'll need encouragement. All the times that you played on your heart, there may be times that you need to be ministered to. God will provide for you. See, the Dead Sea has a problem. It doesn't have an inlet and an outlet. To be a healthy body of water, you've got to have an inlet and you've got to have an outlet. That means we've got to encourage and we've got to accept encouragement. God help us that we as the body encourage one another. And that when folks look at us, they see that we're an encourager. It's so easy to look at the news. And, and you know, sometimes maybe you're just better off turning the news off and getting in the Word of God and being encouraged. I'm talking about finding encouragement that you may encourage others. There's some folks... I, I know that you know what I'm talking about. There are some folks, it feels like I've got to prepare myself to have a conversation with them because it is going to take every ounce of my energy out of me. Yeah. There's some people that, that are that way. Amen. But you know what will make a difference? When we begin to encourage them. Amen. Don't, don't allow yourself to just begin to dig the pit, pit deeper and deeper of discouragement, but begin to fill it in with encouragement. And soon you'll find that you're on a plateau and you may even be on a mountaintop because you filled it in and you built it. Hallelujah. God, help us this morning. But I also know this. There was one day that David was in a cave. He was feeling pretty bad. In fact, he was feeling real discouraged, sister. Dot. But the Bible says that David did something pretty amazing. That David encouraged himself in the Lord. When we encourage others, we will begin to learn how to encourage ourselves. Sometimes when we lay down our head down on a pillow at night, Sometimes we need to encourage ourselves. Sometimes when things are all going wrong, we need to learn how to encourage ourselves. And I find that David knew how to do it because he knew how to encourage others. Encourage me. Sister Holly, if you come this morning, I know that this morning my message was different. <laughs> But I need to tell you that God wants us to be encouragers. Yep. If I was to ask you, or I was to ask any of these young people that are in children's church, tell me about David. You know what they would tell me about? They would tell me about David and Goliath and a sling and a stone. But that is such a little part of David's life. Let me tell you what a big part of David's life is. That when he was forgotten about by the rest of his family, when Samuel was coming to anoint the king, all the other brethren, Jesse's all, all the sons come in, Sister Rachel. And they're not the one. They forgot to call David from the field. You feel like you're living an obscure life. and You feel like sometimes you're out there on your own. Amen. That's David. But David may have been practicing the slingshot, but he was also practicing the harp. Amen. That's what I love about David. 
I mean, he's this warrior, but he's also this man who's a, a poet, and a songwriter, and a harpist. I mean, he's absolutely amazing. Talk about the mix of a guy who's absolutely amazing, but a Craig. But he was learning to play the harp. Then those sheep started coming in. They heard David play and sing. What a place of serenity for those sheep to come to as their shepherd leads them. But one day, the sheep of Israel would need someone who would be an encourager. And God was already preparing that shepherd boy to be the encourager of God's heart, Israel. Wherever you are, understand that God may be using this moment to prepare you for a greater moment to encourage someone else. You might be practicing the slingshot and taking care of your aim, but you are also learning the melody of encouragement. Practice it so that you can give it to others. We forsake not the assembly of ourselves this morning because there is a responsibility each of us has and that's to encourage one another. We'd all be better workers on our job if we learned the ministry that God's called us to. I would be a better parent when I learn in a greater way how to encourage. I will be a greater husband when I learn how to encourage. I will be a greater pastor when I learn how to encourage. I use me in my roles. Whatever you are in your roles, I believe that you can be greater because you learn to encourage. See, someone noticed that Saul got discouraged when the evil spirit came upon him. Let me just say, there can be evil spirits of discouragement that fall on us. But they realized that there was a remedy in an encouragement. They didn't get a lot of details. They didn't even say who it was that recognized it, but they recognized the cure was the encouragement. Who cares who recognizes you as long as you're the cure and you're the encourager? With that said this morning, will we all commit to being a bigger encourager? If you are, you shall be honored. And if you learn the ministry of encouragement, David, you may someday have to use it on yourself. David encouraged himself and the Lord. Being an encourager. Would you come and gather in and commit to be an encourager this morning? Amen. It takes work. It may be an obscure place. It may be a place all alone. But learn to play the harp and learn to be an encourager. And you may be a blessing.